guys, we're going to take advantage here of uh, Sean's uh, YZ125. I think you said it was a 2000. Yep. So I'm getting ready to do the way I like to do transmission disassembly and inspection. So what you're going to see here is what you guys are going to have to model in the lab. However you want to do it when you leave here, go for it. But this is what I want you to do. First off, uh, you're going to see that in your guys' toolkit, I believe that you have like two pairs of snap ring pliers, or do you have a four-piece kit or something now? Four-piece four piece kit. So that'll be good. Get your whole um, toolkit out. I went and just grabbed a bunch of different ones because I want to show you some different types of snap ring uh, removal pliers. Uh, the other thing that I did is I have some zip ties ready because once I disassemble this whole shaft, you're going to see a method I use that then I could take a zip tie through it to put all my parts in order as they came off for organizational reasons because then it'll be stored until my new snap rings come. Does that make sense? And honestly, a lot of times I order all the snap rings ahead of time because I just always make them new because they're very inexpensive and uh, it's just a, a good insurance. Make sense? So I'm going to set these kind of off to the side. Uh, you'll notice here I laid out some white rags. This makes a nice places if I want to write or make notes. Maybe I just want to call this the M for main shaft and call this for counter shaft. Does that make sense? Yeah. So then as I lay my parts out, I don't get confused. The other thing I'm going to do is you're going to see that I only do one at a time. Uh, so I don't have any other problems. Um, I've got a couple other tools. Now I'm going to call these tools and you... You can see if you think that's crazy. I got a highlighter. This is a this is considered a tool to me. And the other thing that we went is Sean went and printed the microfishes for his exact year. Now the benefit is, think about this. I, I want to be organized, I want to be efficient, and I don't want to overlook anything, right? The moment I find a problem, what do I do to the microfish? I highlight that number, which means I need to replace it. Now, if you look at this and you look at the printed fish. Here's all the part numbers as well. So now I could take this to my actual work order later on and be really efficient about it. The other thing that I make my mechanics do this is it eliminates somebody going, no, I said I needed the washer and you ordered the snap ring or, you know, it eliminates. What, what, what this creates is accountability. You said I needed this, you're the technician, I'm gonna order what you highlight. Make sense? Okay. And you know, a cool thing about this is wouldn't you agree that you could hand this off to anybody? Yeah. You could hand this off to anybody and they would be able to order the parts and they don't have to they don't have to think about it So pretty cool method yeah. All right, so let's the other thing I want you to realize you guys are trained So more for our, our YouTube viewers is all microfishes have an arrow stating which direction Left and right is so this is forward or front of the engine. So we know that that means that Anything over here is the left side and anything over here is the right side. Make sense? Yep. To make life easy, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that you're going to do this. You're going to, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove stuff off of the shafts that I don't want to deal with right now. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get, matter of fact, I'm going to take this whole shaft and I'm going to set it off to the side. Do you notice here how I laid my parts out in the same orientation as the microfish? Look at my shift drum here. Do you see how I have the stub here and the stub here? Right. I'll put them side by side here. <coughs> Make sense? Yep. Well, I don't want to lay my parts out on a bench crooked like this. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will just take the fish and do this. Pretty cool? Yeah. Make sense? Yep. So now... I'm just going to get rid of what I don't want, and we're just going to focus on our main shaft here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this guy, and I'm going to set it right here. And so number seven, eight, three, all of this stuff as I separate this shaft is in the same orientation. And that's why I wanted to lay the rags out, because that's what I'm going to do is lay all these pieces out and basically make the microfish. Guys, I'm going to tell you what, this just eliminates a lot of that, uh, that human air. Uh, why don't we focus on a couple of the tools here. When I go to remove snap rings, we can see that we have internal and external snap rings here. So this one's going to go in a snap ring, open it up, and pull it off a shaft. This one here is going to open it up this way. But could you zoom in here and, and look at some of these specialty <coughs> items on these tools? Okay, do you see that dimple on there? Yep. So what that di will do is that will really hook the snap ring really nice to get a real firm pull. Make sense? Let's look at another one. You guys are probably real familiar with these that get inserted in. 
and then we're going to uh, go into a positive round ring hole and then separate it that way, right? Let's look at another one. This is a brand new one we got. You see the serrated edge? Yeah. Okay, right there. So that's going to hopefully create some friction to pull off. The reason I like this one, see how thin it is? The thickness, the thickness right here, it's pretty thin compared to when you look at, you know, how thick this would be. Okay, so this has its advantages. So the other thing that stamp ring pliers tend to come in then is at different angles. So we can have them, all of the ones I showed so far were straight, and then these are like at a 45 degree angle, and then you have a 90 degree angle. So that's why you have all the different ones in your kits. And if I wanna switch this from an inside to outside, I simply take this, oops, switch the hole over, and now it's gonna open it up and pull it off a shaft, okay? So we're gonna move back to the transmission. I'm gonna get back in, a, back in a game method here. And I'm gonna look here and I see, and do we see our eyelets? Yeah. Now, since I picked this up off the table, don't I have to be really careful of orientation? Yeah. Okay, if I wouldn't have my finger there with that, went flying. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, right? Okay, now we're gonna learn something about snap rings too, is that they have a rounded edge and a flat edge due to how they're machined. We've talked about a piece of metal being stamped. That's gonna be pretty important on the assembly. That's the whole thing that is a, a fail on a lot of transmission installation, even from the factory. There's been factory recalls simply because this has been put on the wrong way. We're gonna come back to that. So I'm gonna go ahead here and just set this down. I'm gonna look at my shaft here and what I like to do is, so right away, do you notice how we're missing something? So this is probably the bearing mm -hmm. in the, uh, you know, I glanced at this pretty quick and I was real laser focused right here. This is where, this is probably the bearing in the case. So now we're the snap ring, that's what number eight is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a line through that. What's that tell me? It's off. It, tells, it tells me it was there. I'm gonna order a new one though, make sense? but I want to know that it was there and not missing. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pull the gear uh, clusters off here and I'm going to kind of look at them while I'm doing that and see if there's anything you know special about it or if I see that it looks like there's any chipped teeth or anything. This is just a real quick glance. Now listen to how I do this. When I take it off the shaft, this is my method for putting it back together right. I will take this and I put it face down. Does that make sense? Yep. So then as I take the next gear and I put it face down, and here's the reason I like to do that, is then when I assemble it, I go just like this. Do you, do you get my method to that? Yep. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty important we do that that way. Now I'm gonna stop real quick because I wanna take a look and see if I see any damage or any issues so far. What I'm looking for is I'm looking to see really rounded off corners. I'm gonna show you guys bad ones so that you have something to compare on what a good one and what a bad one looks like. This is looking really good. It's in pretty good shape here. As I pulled this off, I noticed something stuck to it. Do you see that? Normally what you're gonna have is you're gonna have an identical looking piece, okay? So I'm just gonna put a question mark here. Does that make sense? For me, I would go back, double check the fish. I would probably even go to yamaha.com and verify whether it, it looks like that. That is so inexpensive to buy, i just purchase a new one. Make sense? So I put a question mark on there, but I'm gonna draw a line through it because the line tells me that something was there, okay? So, uh, it's a question mark, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If he wants to do that, I'd highly recommend that. Okay, now what I want you to see here is, do you see where this stops the next gear from coming off? Yep. And before we, before we remove it, I want you to focus in here on how the last person installed this circlip. Do you see how do you see how the circlip is kind of half on the shaft and half off? Yeah. Uh, now t take a look at this. I can actually push this. I can push this back and forth. And so what do you think happens when that gear slams against this? It moves it. Yeah, it's not in the best position. Okay, we're going to look at manuals. Honda Common Manual does a wonderful job to tell you how to insert those and what to do instead of having that, that hangover like that. So we'll review. I need to tip this on end. Now, here's something I want you to think about. Just out of practice, I just need to open this enough 
to where I can lightly drag it across the shaft, okay? And I put it down, I flip it down just like I took it off, right? Yep. So we're gonna pull the next one off here. The other thing I wanna look at is I'm looking for oil holes. Since this is a two-stroke, it's unlikely that there's oil holes because we don't have pressure-fed lubrication. But Mason, what you have here is on a four-stroke, when you, when you, what we do is we pressurize oil through the middle of a shaft, and then what happens is it squirts out drilled holes, and that's how the, the shift forks and the gears get oil intentionally where they're supposed to. So on those types of shafts, you guys are going to see this there in four-strokes, you have to put this on the right splines to line up the holes. So make sure you understand, this is a two-stroke, and we're not worried about that, but that on some transmissions, you will see that. Make sense? Mm -hmm. For right now, I'm going to go ahead and just keep going here, uh, and let's keep uh, checking off my parts here. So we took off eight. eight and three, right? And now it looks like we're down to eight, six, and two. So I got another snap ring in here, and this shaft is looking, looking pretty good here. What do you think about this method so far? Pretty good. How many people feel like you could be really confident doing it this way, even as a, an entry level? Yeah. Because how are you going to get into trouble? You got your fish printed. I think there's going to be a washer on here. Hey, by the way, let's check this out. What type of gear? Freewheel. What type of gear was this one? When it, when it slides, it's a slider. slider, okay, and then this one here, fixed. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we're going to have, supposed to have a washer face down and gear face down, and now my shaft. Make sense? Okay, so say I'm going to go check this out later. I'm going to inspect it later. Well, let's uh, let's keep going consistent here. We had all our pieces, didn't we? Yep. So that was a good thing. Everything's at least there. And then what you want to do is take and just build this, oops, build this up. Let's see. And on this here, I'm going to put it just like it was on the shaft here. Here, here, here. So this is a way for me to, uh, my circlip's not wanting to stay in there too bad. Fell right off. Go here. That's a way for me just to keep track of things and I don't have to even think. When I go back together, I mean, obviously it's my responsibility to put this all together. But of the pieces that we an absolutely mandatory want to order, we got another snap ring. Um, what do you think about spending the probably two dollars? How much do you think number seven is? Four thirty-six. Gonna buy it or not? So I'm just gonna put a line through there, a line through there, and that was it for our snap rings, right? What's that number six? No, it was in perfect shape and it wasn't machined down or ground or anything else. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that one. I'm gonna I'm gonna have Sean do the next one. So let's start, let's start disassembling. Because guys, we're worried about this one. We, we actually think we got some jacked up stuff going on here. So, and let's, uh, let's start to disassemble and then just go ahead and set it out. So when you take it off the shaft, then you're just going to set it that way. Yep. Okay, now take, uh, take your pin and let's cross off 31. Yep. Okay, this is the seal and the bearings. Okay, so these two little washers that are showing up, they're on the they're on the inside of the case. So that would actually be this number 20. And what I think happened is this. If you go to number 20, read uh, read the description for me, and then hold this so that you actually make sure you get 20. It's a washer plate. Okay, it says washer plate, and it doesn't give any sizes, right? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they'll tell you the OD, ID, and thickness. Pretty handy. Put that back right sideways, okay? Here's the problem I got. Go ahead and pull yours off. And you guys understand that the bearing and seal was in the case, right? Now, here's why we think this is wrong, too. Put it back on the shaft. Go ahead and wiggle it up and down. 
Do you see that whole big gap in there? Man, it's a Yamaha. Are they going to have that much slop? No. How much do you want to bet that they lost that and just decided to throw it back together and went to bomb guards or something and got a couple shims? Mm -hmm. Okay, the problem we have is that offset the whole transmission. I think that's what caused the damage to a shift fork. I'll just show you right now. You see this, this grinding here on the shift fork? Oh, yeah. So you can see one that's, that's not. There's not a problem. And it actually caused some alignment issues. And the other thing is, is that inside the engine case, it all actually allowed to make contact with the bearing itself. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, mark it off. Yep, yeah, mark it off, but highlight it. And then right here, too, why don't you just put WR? for wrong. Just a little hint or a little reminder that something's goofy. Make sense? Okay, so is, is go ahead and pull that off and set them face down. Beautiful. Now let's just keep going with our gears here. So now we're at a point of Okay, now this is the one I want to look at too because this is the one that actually kissed the bearing. And do you see how it's actually rubbed off? Mm -hmm. Out of all honesty, this has no effect on any of the transmission or shifting, this surface right here, okay? This should not have made contact, but it was all due to, I think, those washers, okay? I would not replace this gear because of this damage, okay? What I'm gonna focus on is the inside of this, and then I'm also gonna focus in here. Do you see how you could tell how something is basically wiped across this? Yeah. As you shift a transmission, that's normal. What happens is the dog or ear off the gears, remember these are all spinning at the same time? Yeah. It has to slam into these big slots. It has to happen at the right time. So basically it drags across there. What I'm really looking for is a real heavy indentation or wear on, on these corners. Can you see the damage? Yep. Yeah. That's pretty minor. That's actually not that terrible. That, that's pretty minor right there. Now you could weigh it out in a customer's bike looking to get the best uh, repair on that. You just make it new. But you're always going to have a little bit of wear on there. What I'm really going to focus on is I'm going to take the gear sets, put it back on here, put this gear in here and make sure that it can lock and that I can't slip it out. Okay? If I look here now, do you see how it's fully engaged in here? Can you see that? Yep. how the dog is in there that little rounding off is just from between gears once it's locked in it's going to have a good full amount of meat this gear does not need replaced now inside the manual they just tell you to inspect it they that's all up to interpretation on what's bad and what isn't i almost hate making this video because realistically the shiniest little mark <coughs> boom a lot of people are going to say oh replace it make it new um, I have full confidence in this that this is going to function fine. I'm going to move out of the way and let him continue to disassemble his counter shaft. Yep. Perfect. There's 15. It's a little deceiving here how it looks like they're taking it all off that way because maybe the whole transmission could be disassembled that way. Okay. Do you have a... Can you come off with that? There you go. So there's just a little burr. There's a little sharp edge on that. Why don't we go ahead and just set it down? What some people might choose to do at this point is go ahead and do that too. Make sense? Either way, it's going to do the same thing. Okay, I think we're into a snap ring now. So let's let's cross off 14. Okay, now let's see. We've got that gear, this gear. So wasn't there a... So it's not, it's not that we have anything, it's that we have to disassemble the other direction. These, these gears here, so I think this whole thing could have come off this way, but these cannot go this way because these are larger splines. So now he's got to take and he's got to switch directions. So let's uh, get you a snap ring pliers there. I'm going to let go of this now and let you, let you do your thing. And he has to be very careful to move his parts to this other side. Okay, go ahead and lift up. There you go. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Okay. Like I said, nine times out of ten, people want to... Let's just go all the way out here. Nine times out of ten, people want to overextend, and you just don't need to. It can break, or you're going to have a problem. Good job. 
I think you got a washer there, don't you? Mm -hmm. okay. Love it. Yep. So that was 16. I'm just going to set that guy right beside of there. Okay. So he's down to another snap ring, right? So I already know, I don't even need to mess with this, and I already know I'm going to order that, right? I already know I'm going to order that. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Snap rings are one-time use. Nice job. Boy, you did it nice that time. You just felt a little more comfortable. Okay, here's that, here's that, here's that, not awkward, but notice the washer's different now. Which number are we? This should be 18. You go here and spread this up a little bit. Now look at it doesn't show teeth. All right, so I have a little bit of a concern, but some you can't always count on the microfish being exact. But what I notice is, no, nah, that would that wouldn't be like that one. I, I really don't think this is a I really don't think this is a problem. But we'll we'll decide to look at it here in a bit. Okay, let's uh, let's keep going. We have so 19. 19. Ideally, we don't have the exact right tool. What you do is you take and measure with a drill bit the size of that hole. You take a drill bit and you measure this hole, and that'll be measured in so many thousandths of an inch. And then you pick these snap ring pliers are sold in the thousandths of an inch of the diameter of the pin. So you can buy an exact uh, fitment, but that's why you guys have like that four piece kit. But if you were doing the same type of transmissions all day long, you would actually want to have that perfect plier. All right, let's get that. Did you get that snap ring where it needs to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're at a point where we need to really go through and inspect this transmission. Now I'm going to focus on are you feeling pretty confident we're good here on the parts that we need to order? Yeah. I see one more. This one here we overlooked. Makes sense. I don't see anything else snap ring wise. All right, we're going to go back into this and now we're going to switch. Guys, I can't stress this enough. This is where the benefit of the microfish comes in too because you're going to forget, well, is this the left shift fork, the right shift fork? Real quickly, by its design, do you notice here that once again, this is the left side of the fish. This is the right side of the fish. Here's our forward. And start to look at the relationship of the parts as I laid them out. So that means that this goes into the right case. And look at the shift forks. They also, on the picture, do a pretty good job. Notice the depth here and look at these two. So this wider one, if someone came and brought this to me, because you have customers that just bring this to you in a box. They tried to take it apart, didn't know how to do it, and then just threw everything in a box. So I could see here that this is the right shift fork of the case, and this is the left one. This is really nice because I for sure know that we have a bunch of damage on this shift fork, so that allows me very quickly to make sure I'm ordering the right one. Make sense? The, the shift drum's beautiful. There's, uh, there's really nothing wrong with it. I think what I'll do is I'll just point out real quickly. You want to shine the light for me? Where the place the shift drum wears the most is right here. This is where the shift fork this, this pin sits right here like this, and it lands on these flat spots, okay? So when I look at the shift drum into the, all the places where there's flats, I'm going to really look for real rounded edges, and I will show you guys damaged ones, okay? But this shift drum's in excellent shape. We have no issues. The fork itself, though, we know is, is pretty heavily damaged. So the thing is, when I have damage on the fork, what's that tell me about the gear that it controlled? It might be damaged too. It might be damaged too. So what I really want to do is focus on that gear. That's the one. Okay, so this is the fork. This is the gear that this controlled back and forth and it engaged a tooth over here, engaged a tooth over here. What I'm really looking for is damage on the inside. There's some metal smearing going on. Can you guys kind of see the smearing right there? Yeah, a little bit of scarring. You'll see here, it's just, it's smeared metal. When this is spinning thousands of RPM, that metal smears itself over. Well, the metal came from right there, right here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Has to go somewhere. So what I'm looking for is, this gear is pretty rough. 
And as that spins around there, that's just going to continue to have more problems. This gear should really be replaced. Now what the manual is going to tell us to do is they're going to tell us to take and measure the thickness of what's called the pad. So this is the shift work pad. We're going to measure that thickness. And then another thing they do is they tell us to put it in the gear. We're going to take feeler gauges and slide them in between here and there's a measurable spec in the manual. But we know that we have physical damage on both of these so we want to replace these two parts. Make sense? Yeah. So let's go back to our gear here, and that was what? It needed to be on the secondary, so it would be yeah. number 14. Okay, so we want that one, and then did I do the shift fork? Okay, one well, the last thing, since the drum is good, we know the fork and gear is bad, we really believe that that happened because of that homemade washer, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing we need to make sure is that this pin is, is not bent. So a lot of people will roll it along a bench here and, and try to look for a, shine your flashlight right here. They'll try and look for a wobble. We could put this on V-blocks and actually, remember what V-blocks are where we put it on a, a tool like this with a dial indicator and we spin it and we can actually measure it. Yeah. The ideal place to go roll this would be on that granite block mm -hmm. and actually see if there's a wobble. But I mean guys, when they're bent, they're really noticeable. Do you think this is bent at all? No. No, that looks really good and straight. So I'm going to set things back in here and guys, uh, Sean here now fully knows all the parts he needs to do. And how easy was that? Pretty easy. 